Good evening. This is the VSB TV 11 News for Tuesday, March 25th. I'm Peter Cattell. Our top story. Bermuda's emergency services will spend much of tomorrow engaged in a tsunami exercise in partnership with NOAA and the U.S. Tsunami Warning Task Force. Many communication routes will be employed during the exercise, and the public should not be alarmed in any way by what they may hear or read, as it is important to test our response to an imagined scenario in as realistic a way as possible. In this case, the imagined disaster features the Canary Islands off Spain, where an ancient volcano has suffered severe tremors as recently as last December. Kimberly Zuhl, director of the Bermuda Weather Service, will be involved in the exercise, and she dealt with public concerns today in a statement which is read for us by VSB News' Brian Dobby. All coastlines are at risk of being hit by a tsunami. Bermuda was affected by one as recently as 1929. There was also one created from the 1755 Lisbon earthquake that reached beyond Bermuda to Canada and the Caribbean. These are actual historical events. They were not the monster tsunami waves depicted in the movies, but even small tsunamis have a lot of power and volume that leads to strong currents and eddies. Try imagining the currents in Flats Inlet surrounding the whole island. This becomes a hazard to swimmers and mariners, as well as those with property on the shore, especially marinas and dock. The greatest obstacles are trying to increase public awareness of the reality that Bermuda has experienced tsunamis before, no matter how infrequently they have appeared and when one does appear for the public to understand where the official warning will be coming from and what to do. A mother and son duo who were intending to travel to Bermuda from North Carolina were arrested this past weekend after they were found with 24 pounds of cannabis in their luggage. 42-year-old Karen Sullivan and 25-year-old Corey Braylon were arrested at Charlotte Douglas International Airport on Sunday. According to international media reports, the duo headed to Bermuda with a connecting flight in Atlanta. A report by a Charlotte-based WSOC reporter stated that the mother and son had dropped the luggage off at the ticket counter, at which time the bags were put onto a conveyor belt and x-rayed. It was then the Transport Safety Administration noticed multiple suspicious black rectangular packages lying at the bottom of the suitcases inside the luggage lining. The mother and her son are currently in the Mecklenburg County Jail, facing charges of trafficking marijuana. After 35 years of growing increasingly irrelevance, the Charities Act has finally been redrafted and passed by Parliament. And Minister in Charge, Senator Michael Fay, is confident that the new model will put an end to growing concerns that Bermuda's charities lack the proper controls. There'll be a number of regulations that will come to the House and the Senate over the next month or so. Uh, and there's also a big guideline booklet that will be available online that talks about the public benefit test for charities. Uh, we've had to go in this direction. Uh, there are obviously concerns that have been raised, and I've mentioned this before, but concerns raised uh, by um, international organizations when they're looking at monetary policy in Bermuda. And one of the weak points was charity administration. So the Ant National Anti-Money Laundering Committee has had a great input into this bill. We're quite excited to see it. I think it will give some real clarity as to the charitable position of organizations in Bermuda uh, that are far more transparent, and, and obviously that's what we need in Bermuda right now, especially when the times as they are economically, you want to have that comfort that your money is going in the right direction where, where when you've made those donations, who's getting the benefit. Will there be some charities that may find that they have to close down? Um, I, I hope not. I do think, however, that there's far too many charitable um, organizations for the small community we have. There's over 400. We've done a lot of work in the last year of doing consolidations. You recall that we signed a memorandum of understanding with the Centre on Philanthropy, so that if charities, if someone's trying to set up a new charity, they go to the Centre on Philanthropy, work with the Centre on Philanthropy to make a decision, is this an appropriate charity right now? Is there already organizations in Bermuda doing something similar? You want the funds to be put into one big pool that it makes obviously a lot more sense that people are getting the monies that they, that they need uh, rather than having so many organizations doing the same thing. What the charitable organizations will now see, and it should make, give them comfort as well, that there are proper guidelines and regulations in place. It protects them, it protects, I guess, the consumer, but also government and, and gets away from fears of, of money laundering. Um, 
I'm quite excited about it. I think it's a very positive, it's a very good bill, uh, and sets us up for the next 20, 30 years of charitable administration. It, it's about time, and this thing's now, you know, 35 years old, the current act. It's time for a new one. A 20-year-old man who appeared in magistrate's court to be sentenced for stealing over $5,000 worth of jewelry from his grandparents learned that he will be spending the next year in prison. VSB's Julia Smet has the details. John Johnson appeared in court earlier this year and pleaded guilty to breaking into his grandparents' Warwick home in January and stealing numerous pieces of jewelry, including gold rings, a gold bracelet, and a gold charm, all of which amounted to a value of $5,675. During sentencing, defense lawyer Susan Moore Williams argued that Johnson is very young and therefore there is a window of opportunity to help him choose a more productive path. However, prosecutor Nicole Smith said said that the defendant had showed no remorse for his actions. She also said that if Johnson was allowed to be in the community, there was the likelihood that he would reoffend. Ms. Smith advised that a custodial sentence would help deter Johnson from similar behavior and would protect the community. Upon sentencing, Senior Magistrate Archibald Warner stated that the only mitigating factor was that Johnson had pleaded guilty to the charges at an early stage. However, in light of the fact that he had similar previous offenses, Senior Magistrate Archibald Warner Warner ruled that Johnson be sentenced to a 12-month prison sentence, followed by two years probation. I'm Julia Smat, reporting for VSB News. Michael Mizek, the former premier of the Turks and Caicos Islands, has appeared in court again. A second hearing to review the sufficiency of evidence went forward despite pleadings by Mizek that he has no liquid assets to pay his attorneys. Mizek is accused of corruption, as VSB News' Chris Lodge reports. Chief Justice Edwin Goldsboro found that the special investigation and prosecution team had enough evidence to commit Mizek to trial, but the trial date was not indicated. There will, though, be another hearing on April 4th to determine if Mizek can access some of his assets to pay for his support and legal fees. Meantime, Mizek's bail has been extended, but he's no longer required to report to the police twice a day. He's now required to report only once. He must return to his place of residence by midnight and cannot leave before 6 a.m. Mizek, who was said to be penniless when he became chief minister in August of 2003, now reportedly has 17 bank accounts. Those accounts include several in the TCI, also accounts located in London, California, Florida, the Czech Republic, and Liechtenstein. He also has a known interest in 35 corporations, also a number of real estate properties. The charges pending against Mizek our conspiracy to collect bribes, misappropriation of government funds, and money laundering. I'm Chris Lodge, VSB News. Still ahead is Rachel with the weather preview. Thanks, Peter. A developing gale moves into the area tonight. On the radar, of course, lots of activity, lots of rain through the evening. Please stay tuned for the full weather report to see if it's going to stick around for the rest of the week. The weather radar picture provided courtesy of the Ministry of Transport on VSB TV 11. You can count on us. Purdue Fresh Whole Chickens, only $2.19 per pound. Save 50 cents on imported romaine lettuce, just $2.99 each. All varieties of Minute Maid juice coolers, only $6.29 for a package of 10. Champion Seedless Raisins, just $3.59 for a 12-ounce box. For a healthy treat, all varieties of Chibana yogurt, only $1.69 for a 6-ounce tub. Visit our website at www.marketplace.bm for more weekly specials. You can count on us. Copy Fax is Bermuda's authorized Samsung dealer. See a large range of Samsung color and black and white multifunctional machines, printers, scanners, faxes, and copiers, and all networkable. CopyFax has Samsung machines suitable for home, office, or any size business in an A4 format, taking up less room than other similar equipment. And replacement supplies are in stock for all of their Samsung products. Affordable shopping at CopyFax Limited, where service comes first. April is Environmental Awareness Month, and VSB is committed to bringing you important facts. 1450 AM Gold and Mix 106 FM will broadcast Did You Know Vignettes and interviews with local experts and government officials during the month of April. VSB TV 11 will show documentary films such as climate change, pollution and overfishing of our oceans, clean air, sewage, vanishing of the bees, and other topics. April is Environmental Awareness Month. Stay tuned to VSB Radio and Television for details. Thank you.
Bermuda is an easy way to find great discounts while discovering fun activities to do in Bermuda. Discover the best spas, restaurants, activities, services, and shops at 50% off. Sign up to Bermudeals and start saving today. Hamilton Rotarians had ample food for thought today during their luncheon meeting when Executive Director of Green Rock, Gordon Johnson, shared information on the sustainability of the environment going back to when electricity first came to Bermuda. He suggested Bermuda might in future be seeking alternative energy. So at what pace should it grow? Uh, who will support it? Is it an issue of, of government policy as well as private enterprise? We want to really work on that so that we can get the equation to understand who are the, what are the variables within that and what role can we play? So we really want to be active in asking that question and we'd love to be part of that conversation. BSB's Charles Webb later asked him about the effectiveness of past and this Saturday's Earth Hour. In terms of being a symbolic coming together for our community, we think it's very effective because it really gives us that opportunity to really pause and consider our relationship to the environment, to join a, a, a global initiative, and to really think with, with encouragement the 60 plus, which means we're, we're, coming, we're turning off our lights for 60 minutes. It's an act that we can all do together, and we can join together at the city of Hamilton, or we can do it in the privacy of our home. And then the plus is, what did that stimulate as we did that, as we paused, as we took part in this global initiative? What more can we do? Can we turn the lights off all the time when we leave the room? Is there something else that we can do? And that's really the idea of Earth Hour, is just inviting people for one hour to, to take into consideration all the opportunities of being part of a global initiative. Do people take this seriously? I think both. I think pe some people take it very seriously because it's, a, it's an active way to get the, bring the community together. And I think for other people, they're not as convinced as those that are actively involved that this is more than symbolism. And so that's part of our job is how do we invite people that are on the edge and then encourage people that are in the center of this that do take it seriously. Now, I've been told people treat this more as a social hour. Well, I think to some degree that's what coming together is. It's about socially seeing each other, recognizing that we are a community, that we, um, you know, asking the question, what can we do together that we cannot do alone? And I think that's part of the symbolism, is that when we come together, there's many more opportunities to answer that question than when we're alone. Tomorrow, he speaks to how his and similar organizations in Bermuda work together. The newly published National Defense Report has advised against putting an immediate end to conscription, preferring a four-year grace period instead. Senator Jeff Barron, Junior Minister for National Security, thinks they are on the right track. When you have, uh, you know, this, this huge decision, you know, getting rid of conscription, you know, the trade-offs, again, are keeping it. There's a human rights component. Uh, there's all sorts of different components. Ultimately, what Bermuda needs uh, and I think Bermuda, what Bermuda wants is uh, to be able to manage crises, risk appropriately, efficiently, so that you know, we are resilient as a nation, so that there's no uh, business disruption. So that, that means the streets are clean. That means businesses can operate. You know, you know, when we talk about uh, the regiment, they're a component of our organizational resilience, of our business continuity product for the entire island. That's really important. Um, and secondly, you know, I think it's also important to realize that you know, the, um, the conscription also represents something historical as well. So there's these two things that, you know, again, come back to this trade-off. So, you know, if, of course, if we can get rid of conscription tomorrow and ensure that we have um, the need and the means of ensuring that we're you know, going to be able to respond to any crises, risk, disaster relief effectively, a absolutely, it's a no-brainer. But again, I think, you know, they the proceed with caution, um, and I think, you know, that is a, um, it's the safe approach. Um, but, you know, we have to look at, um, you know, conscription as a whole. Remember, the folks that are being conscripted now were eight years old when Fabian hit. So their, their, their concept of what the regiment does as far as disaster relief is something that they've been told or they read about. 
they didn't experience it. They weren't out in the streets like I was as a police officer helping the regiment move trees. So we have to continually remind folks of what the regiment does besides the parades, besides the tattoos. There's a real role for them. A total of 27 members of the junior leaders team joined the regiment this weekend for a major training exercise. The school-age branch of the armed services joined up with the regiment for an exercise based at Ferry Reach in St. George's. The junior leaders were expected to spend the weekend honing their skills in the field and acting as enemy forces as their older counterparts in the regiment practiced their battlefield command skills. They also used the laser tag system, which records hits from laser-equipped rifles. Junior leaders Lance Corporal Cavon Rayner, who is 14 years old and from Somerset, said, I've enjoyed it very much. We've been helping the regiment doing section training. <coughs> he also went on to say that it can be very tough, but that the group had learned self-discipline and how to be a good leader. Junior leaders Sergeant Major Dean Rabain said it was very encouraging to see the young people develop skills and confidence. He said due to it being a youth program, the regiment tries to strike a balance between having fun and serious activities. Now, here's a look at the daily markets. Presented by Bias. Here are the daily markets presented by Bias. Equity markets rebounded after economic data from the U.S. came in higher than forecast. Higher metal prices forced gains in commodity currencies. U.S. stocks advanced for the first time in three days after consumer confidence rose to a six-year high. The S&P 500 closed up 0.44 percent at 1,866. 139,225 shares of Bank of Butterfield traded hands with the stock price unchanged at $1.99 per share. Other Bermuda-related stock listed in the U.S. closed higher. UK and European stocks gained following positive economic releases in the US. The FTSE 100 was up 1.3% and the German DAX gained 1.63% at the end of trading. Chinese stocks were marginally up after analysts highlighted that concerns over the Chinese economy may be overstated. The Shanghai index closed the trading day at 2067, up 0.05%. The Bovespa rose as an increase in metal prices overshadowed a reduction in Brazil's credit rating. The index gained 0.29% to close at 48,135 at the end of trading. The U.S. Treasury sold $32 billion of two-year notes at a yield of 0.469%, the highest since May 2011. The 10-year Treasury bonds closed yielding 2.74%, up two basis points. Commodity currencies gained as higher metal prices lent support to Australian and Canadian economies. Australian dollar was up 0.35% and Canadian dollar gained 0.29% as of the last trade. That was a look at the daily markets presented by Bias. There's more news after the break. For much more furniture, visit Bermuda's only Ashley Furniture Gallery, Big Saving Zone. You want the best? Forget the rest. For all your furniture needs, shop Big Saving Zone and support your local retailers. Have you ever ordered something online expecting it to be a certain price, but when it arrives it ends up being a whole lot more? Beware of those unexpected hidden fees. That never happens at Big Saving Zone. Open Tuesday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Big Saving Zone, at the end of Stocks Road, St. David's. Noah's Ark Feed and Supply at Marsh Lane, Devonshire, with the best selection of pet supplies in Bermuda. Tropical fish enthusiasts will find everything for building the perfect aquarium, large or small. Noah's Ark can feed your pets with quality brand name foods, as well as providing them with nutritional supplements and grooming supplies to keep them looking and feeling their best. Don't forget playtime. Your dogs, cats, birds, and other family favorites will love the toys and activity items, too. Noah's Ark Feed and Supply, number one on every animal lover's list, open till six nightly. 
save two dollars on red ripe California strawberries, just four ninety nine for a one pound package. Certified Angus beef sirloin tip steaks only five ninety nine per pound. All varieties of Betty Crocker cookie mix just three thirty nine for a seventeen point five ounce bag. Mott's apple juice only four fifty nine for a sixty four ounce plastic bottle. Blue bonnet margarine sticks just a dollar fifty nine for a one pound box. All stores open Monday through Saturday until ten p.m. and Sunday nine a.m. to seven p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on Bermuda College faculty, students, staff, and friends of the college spread out over the island last week for its fifth annual Community Service Week. Nearly 70 volunteers spent a total of 200 hours assisting various charitable organizations. Tasks undertaken range from sorting clothes to sorting files, cooking food and washing pots, cleaning utility closets, kitchen cupboards and windows, and also beautifying parts of the college campus all over a five-day period. Thirteen charities benefited this year, and they included BUEI, Lefroy House, Lorraine Rest Home, Matilda Smith Williams Residence, Meals on Wheels, Packwood Home, the Salvation Army Thrift Shop, Star, Sunset View Rest Home, Sunshine League, Westmeath, and Windreach. The sports report is next after the break. ABC Valencia won three of the six finals during the 15th annual Kappa Junior Football Classic at the Sports Center. Eight players receive special mention from VSB Sports. They are Lalani Nesbitt of Valencia, Gia Rattery Smith of Somerset Trojans, Yanis Roberts of Valencia, Tajay Butterfield of Somerset Trojans, Samario Vals Paul of PHC, and his teammate Jalam Hassel. Andrew Kemp of BAA, and Tajay Smith of Dandytown. Capper official Jamal Hart has the results. Today's conclusion of the exciting Kappa Classic 2014, we had Valencia play Dandy Stars in the girls' under 10 finals, with Valencia winning 3 to 1. And in the second match, it was the girls' under 12s finals, which consisted of Valencia versus some of the Trojans. Once again, the Valencia girls won out also with a score of 3-1. to one. And then we moved over to the boys' finals. And in the first match that was played was the boys' under-14s. And in that final, we had a very exciting match, which featured uh, the BAA, Green Knights, versus the, the Demi-Town Browns. And in that game there, we had it went down to a, to a penalty shootout. That's right, after being deadlock 2-2. Two, two. That's correct, 2-2 two, two at, the, at the half, at the end. And it went on to penalty kicks with BAA winning out on penalty kicks. 2-1. 2-1. Two, one. Two to one. So it was a very, very exciting final. And then we had the boys under 12 finals, which featured uh, probably one of the best matches of the, of the, of the, of the, of the tournament, Somerset versus PAC. And the winners of that match was Somerset 1-2 to kneel over PAC. And last Kevin but not least, Bowers. we had the Dick boys Bowers. under eight Zero, finals. Seven, three, three, and Kevin Bowers. 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 actually it was the boys on the tennis, I'm sorry. Yes. And that Bowers. featured Zero, uh, Valencia seven, versus Val Valencia A versus Valencia Whites. And Valencia A won two to nil. And last but not least, we had the boys under eight finals, which featured Hamilton Parish versus Bet Valencia. And with Hamilton Parish winning two to one over, over Valencia. Jamal, uh, we understand a team from Boston brought uh, two, two teams down, or a club from Boston brought two teams down, and the word is that uh, John Smith uh, could be uh, bringing more teams uh, next year. Yes, yes, that's correct. Um, thanks, thanks to the Department of Tourism and Youth and Sports, uh, the John Smith Soccer Academy. We're here for the first time, and we had an international flavor. Uh, the teams, they competed very well. Unfortunately, they didn't make it through to the... To the to the quarterfinals or semifinals, but they all had a very, very good time. They're, they're from Milford, Massachusetts, and they are ready to play the plans to want to come back and bring girls' teams and, and boys under eights, boys under tens, along with the boys under 12 and under 14s. Choose to be healthy, Bermuda. 
get out there and exercise with a sunscreen hat and shirt on every day. Eat healthy, don't smoke, and check your brown spots once a month to detect skin cancer early. Anything growing darker, bigger, jagged borders needs to be checked. Wear your sunscreen, hat, and shirt every day. Be sun safe, Bermuda. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's VSV weather forecast. Our weather shot is brought to you by Cindy Swan, taken this morning in St. George's. For so an out taking a cheeky little round of golf down at the St. George's Golf Club. Beautiful morning to take it, quite fair weather. Um, look at that water, absolutely gorgeous down there. Um, kind of a little bit of gray on the horizon, foreshadowing the rain that came later this afternoon. So I hope you finish your round and thank you for sending in this wonderful shot. Temperatures for today we had a high of 64 at 3 in the afternoon and a low of 57 at 7 in the morning. Current conditions, 63 degrees, humidity, 75%, wind southeast, 20 to 25 knots with gusts up to 35 knots, and barometric pressure is falling at 29.99 inches. Rainfall index the month of March, 2.96, yearly total, 17.27, the yearly normal for this time is 13.89 inches. I'm looking at the satellite. An approaching cold front that is associated with a strong low pressure system to our west brings rain and showers, strong to gale force winds and overnight thunderstorms. Gale force winds and periods of rain and showers will persist through Wednesday. High pressure will return Thursday, bringing fair and cool conditions. And for those of you who are traveling, Atlanta, sunny, 53, Boston, snow, 36, Charlotte, sunny, 50, London, mostly cloudy and 52. Miami, 72, mostly sunny. New York, 37 and partly cloudy. Orlando, 66, mostly sunny. Philadelphia, possible flurries and 40. Toronto, mostly cloudy, 25. And Washington, breezy and 40 degrees. Back at home tonight, overcast, rain and showers and a risk of thunder overnight with a low near 62. Wind southeast, 15 to 20 knots and then increasing to 20 to 30 knots with gusts up to 40 knots. And then uh, backing southwest and increasing again, 30 to 40 knots with gusts up to 50 knots. So move that uh, lawn furniture inside. And tomorrow, mostly cloudy, periods of rain or showers, easing later with a high near 69. Wind southwest, 35 to 40 knots with gusts up to 50 knots. Then veering west-southwest in the afternoon, and then kind of backing west-northwest by the evening, and then veering northwest, uh, 20 to 30 knots overnight. Marine tonight, of course, we have a small craft warning and a gale warning with seas inside the reef, 2 to 4 feet, seas outside the reef, 7 to 10 feet, and sea surface temperature is 69 degrees. And marine tomorrow, gale warning and a small craft uh, from night, small craft warning from the night, seas inside the reef, 3 to 5 feet, seas outside the reef, 12 to 18 feet, low tide will be at 11.42 in the morning, and high tide will be at 5.38 in the afternoon. And looking at the five-day forecast. Thursday, sunny periods, windy, high near 65. Friday, mix of sun and cloud, high near 68. Saturday, partly cloudy, high near 69. And Sunday, mix of sun and cloud with a high near 72. Thank you to Fred Briley, our meteorologist for tonight, and everyone at the Bermuda Weather Service. I'm Rachel Sodden. Have a great evening. Thanks for tuning in to the TV11 News. We'll look forward to your company tomorrow night. Good night. Peter Cattell's attire, courtesy of A.S. Cooper & Sons Limited. Wardrobe and makeup for Rachel Sorden, provided by Gibbons Company. BSB, TV 11, Bermuda.